the KTM Super Duke 1290 GT and the KTM Super Duke 1290R. As you know, I've had the GT for about two weeks now, and I've been riding it and enjoying it a lot. And I've had the 1290R for about a year and a half. Even though they are both based on the same bike, they can't be any more different, guys. I mean, 177 horsepower, 173, I think, horsepower, 189 kilograms dry, 205 kilograms dry. But it's... I mean, this is the beast, and the best way I can describe it is the gentle giant, which actually suits the bike's character to the T, because it is a touring bike, it is a grand tourer, it's, it's, it's meant to be comfortable, it's meant to deliver its power in a linear, comfortable way, while this one is just a hooligan, as simple as that. It, it, KTM has done a lot, I mean, they, as I said in a previous video, they could have just taken the R here, and um, decided we'll just put fairing on it and that's it and and allow it to have some some panniers and whatever but they've actually done a lot i don't know they've changed the engine maybe they did a, a, a softer cam or it's the electronics or whatever it just delivers its power in a lot more gentle way which suits the bike's character again it has a lot of different stuff than the r it has the um, semi-active suspension it has uh, the quick shifted up it has the cruise control it has some other MSR which is the engine uh, something regulated to lessen the uh, engine braking and um, they've done a fantastic job now many people ask me and I never like to to, to answer these questions how do I compare it to the uh, GS it's a difficult one and um, what I would say is if I was solely touring on tarmac, crossing Europe and um, just pure tarmac, I think I would go for the GT. I mean, that engine power is, is, is addictive and is just as comfortable as the GS. But if I was to do off-roading, which, like I did in my Africa tour, and some gnarly off-roading, there's no contest. It will be the uh, GS. But then again, this is not the competitor for the GS in that sense. You've got the Adventure Series, which I'm yet to try in, in off-roading. So that's where it, I can give you uh, an opinion then. But the GS has got a, such a fantastic character, that boxer engine, and the GT has got that fantastic engine, which is very addictive in terms of power. And for me, there's, between these two, the R and the GT, it w the R will always win it. I'm, um, I mean, I, I would have very little use of the GT, while the, the R, you can enjoy it on every single road in town, out of town, twisties, and so on. But it's not a purely touring bike. I wouldn't tour on this um, like I would tour on the GT. That's my uh, two cents on the subject. If you would like I can do a um, sound comparison. The, the GT has got the uh, Acra and, uh, but it's only the exhaust, it's not a full system, so it's still got the valves, it's still got the, uh, the catalytic converter and all the gizmos, while my R has got the full EVO 2 racing system, which is a um, no catalyst, no uh, any of that stuff. So um, I'll put them side by side and uh, let you hear them.
it's not a fair comparison because obviously, as I said, the uh, full system on the uh, the R, but it just goes to show removing the cat what a big difference it makes. So just changing the exhaust usually doesn't make such a big difference. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is the height difference. Uh, the GT, whether it is because of that comfortable heated gel seat or whatever, it is higher. And I think it's much higher than the quoted one and a half extra centimeters that seat gives. So um, it is a higher bike. Is it as comfortable as the GS? So there you go guys, the verdict from Mrs. RJ. She is very comfortable and as comfortable as she was on the um, GS in Africa.